My name is Matt Furchin. I'm a researcher with the Leiden Asia Center, and I'm also the head of global China research at the Mercator Institute for China Studies in Berlin. And I am a specialist in China's relations with developing countries. I work on China's political economy. Uh, and in this case, I do a lot of work on China's Belt and Road as well. So I'm doing part of the project that focuses on China's Belt and Road in Southeast Asia. Uh, and I'm doing this in collaboration with a few of, of the other researchers in the, the project. And what we're basically doing is looking at trying to map uh, responses to the Belt and Road and to connectivity in general in Southeast uh, and South Asia. And so far, my work has focused uh, on case studies uh, in Cambodia, Myanmar, Vietnam, uh, and the Philippines. I've been to all of those four countries so far uh, and uh, done anywhere from a few days to a few weeks uh, of research in each place and then done follow-up work uh, talking with different people in government, academia, civil society, both inside and outside of those countries. Agency is clearly a really important dimension uh, of China's relationship with other countries, including in its Belt and Road Initiative activities, just in, and also just in general in its commercial and diplomatic relationships, especially with developing countries in regions like Southeast Asia, which is the focus of my research uh, for this project, but also in other regions that I look at, like Latin America. Um, so the question of what agency involves uh, is really important. It basically means taking seriously that there are multiple actors involved in commercial and diplomatic deal making uh, along the Belt and Road. So that means that countries who are the recipients of Chinese deal making, investment, financing, uh, and trade related deal making also have a role uh, in the outcomes of those projects. I think there's an assumption that agency is a good thing in and of itself, and that we just point to agency, uh, that that is necessarily, that that's enough, or that it's a, enough to say that any country that is on, that is doing deals with China as part of the Belt and Road, that it has agency. To me, that's just the starting point. Agency, at least as I've seen it play out, is not necessarily such a good or straightforward thing. Again, especially when politicians are the ones who are doing politicized deal making in their own interest, as I believe was the case in Sri Lanka. Uh, but then other instances of it uh, have a more optimistic sort of outlook in terms of civil society groups, but it's an uphill battle for them. In addition to what I'm doing with the Southeast Asia part of the project, I'm also doing a section on China and Latin America. So along with one of the other researchers in the project, Ruben, I am doing an overview of the Belt and Road in Latin America. And that will necessarily then include some comparative reference to how the BRI is being received, what it means in detail in Latin America and Southeast Asia. But a lot of my overall approach to looking at the BRI, but also China's involvement with developing countries is comparative. So I have a background in looking at China's investment, trade, and financial relationships with Latin America, and that certainly informs how I look at the Southeast Asia case. And what I see are a lot of similarities across regions in terms of patterns of how China, for instance, attempts to package loan for infrastructure deals, some of the problems that have arisen in terms of environmental impacts, the way that governments and civil societies have responded in, in different regions. So this is certainly one of the focuses that I bring to the project. Uh, I think it's also really important to look at the role of U.S.-China geostrategic competition in these regions. So Southeast Asia, it's very clear. It's an important region both for China and the United States and the geopolitical competition between them plays out in terms of the impact and responses to the Belt and Road. This is also the case in Latin America, and I believe also the case in other regions like, like Africa. So this US-China element is, is also important. And then the, the last of them is that I think this is important for Europe uh, when we think about European perspectives on the Belt and Road and why it might matter. Certainly, 
all of the Belt and Road is playing out against this broader background of U.S.-China geostrategic competition, the EU's own proposals for a new connectivity strategy for Europe and Asia also play out against this background. What is going to be an EU kind of response to issues like more sustainable connectivity? All of that is also really important in a comparative perspective. So one of the surprising results of my research is that there are interesting linkages to the research that I've also done about China's domestic political economy, namely the really important informal economy in China in which there are illicit gray areas of the Chinese economy that have been really important in driving economic growth, but also created a variety of problems inside of China. What I see in my research on China and Southeast Asia is that some of this informal activity or illegal activity is also creating challenges and difficulties in Southeast Asia. So there are these un under estimated and very important parts of the Chinese economy that are having an impact on Southeast Asian countries. And this is generally not included in research about the Belt and Road in Southeast Asia or elsewhere.